Welcome everyone back to an in-depth playthrough of the Bungie Marathon series. In this video, I am going to discuss a little bit about the various versions of Marathon, a short bit about Aleph 1 and the difficulty settings, what a vidmaster is, how to cheat in Marathon, and ending with a short bit about Aleph 1 plugins. Enjoy the video. Obviously, there are the original Mac versions of Marathon 1, Marathon 2, and Marathon Infinity. All three of the Marathon games were also released together in a Marathon Trilogy box that came with the Marathon Scrapbook, which was largely written by Hamish Sinclair, author of the Marathon Story page. Bungie also released Marathon 2 Durandal on Windows. In the Windows version, some of the maps were modified. I will cover some of these differences when we get to specific levels that were changed. Marathon 2 Durandal was also ported to the Xbox by Freeverse Incorporated. The game was rewritten to support 60 FPS and a 16x9 resolution. This means that some of the physics and gameplay is a little bit different than the original game. The Xbox version also featured a new survival mode. The whole trilogy was ported to the iPhone and iPad and can be found on the Apple Store by Soli Dio Gloria Productions, LLC in 2011 and 2012. The iPhone versions of the trilogy added in dynamic lighting, which could make its way into LF1 at some point in the future as it is already in the works. A less known version of Marathon is Super Marathon for Apple's Pippin console. This version of the game includes the first Marathon and Marathon 2 Durandal on the same cartridge. The Pippin console only ended up selling 30,000 consoles in Japan and 12,000 consoles in the United States. I don't know how many copies of Super Marathon there are out there, but you will be hard pressed to find a copy to buy and it will likely cost you an arm and a leg because it has become a collector's item. Today the game can be played for free on Mac, Windows, and Linux using Aleph 1 open source. Aleph 1 allows playing all the original Marathon games and fan made content. There were also two leaked betas of the first Marathon game that were out there on the internet somewhere. I don't know where these versions might be. On the Marathon Trilogy disc, there was a hidden folder that contained a few betas that were released by Bungie to their fans. These betas don't give us much, but one of the marathons was Marathon Zero, which was similar to Pathways in Darkness and was shown by Bungie in 1994 at San Francisco's Macworld Expo. Aleph 1 provides an excellent and easy way to play the Marathon Trilogy today for free. Since the source code for Marathon 2 and Marathon Infinity were both released by Bungie, those versions are virtually identical to the original Mac games. The source code for the first Marathon game was never released, but you will be hard pressed to find a difference between the Aleph 1 version of Marathon and the original game. Installing Aleph 1 and using it is fairly straightforward. If you have issues, you should consider asking questions in the Marathon Discord server, which has an active and helpful community. Also check out the wiki page that provides useful information about LF1 and links to various Marathon websites. When using LF1 you will almost certainly want to set the mouse feel to modern. You will probably also need to significantly lower the mouse sensitivity settings. There are tons of people who complain about the mouse not feeling good. It is an old game, so it won't ever feel great, but it shouldn't feel terrible either. The mouse look in LF1 does work fairly well. The difficulties in the Marathon Trilogy from easiest to hardest are Kindergarten, Easy, Normal, Major Damage, and Total Carnage. There are several changes in the difficulties, and all of these changes are listed in the LF1 wiki page. The difficulties change several things, including alien promotions, damage received, enemy health, alien movement, projectile speed, enemy attack frequency, oxygen usage rate, and so on. On Total Carnage difficulty, there is no ammo cap. In the first marathon, on Total Carnage, you could also pick up duplicates of the same weapon. In this playthrough, I'll be playing on Total Carnage because it is the hardest difficulty and what most of the experienced community plays the game on. The most difficult part about the Total Carnage difficulty will probably be the oxygen usage rate on a couple of levels in Marathon Infinity. We will tackle that when we get there. 
Because all the enemies will be fully promoted, I will show off the unpromoted versions of these aliens and explain the differences. For those who are curious, the aliens will not be promoted when loading a previous save file on Total Carnage difficulty. In this situation, the aliens will keep their original rank. Vidmaster was a term coined by Bungie to encourage mastery of the single player levels and also to distinguish good players online. Here is a quick historical breakdown of how the term Vidmaster came to be as it can be quite confusing to a new player exactly what a Vidmaster is. The term first appeared in November of 1994 with the first marathon demo. On the first terminal message in the demo was a tutorial message that read, Learn to vid, that is, learn to look up and down at will. This is also useful for finding cool things. This seems to imply that the word vid is related to the ability to look around. It is likely related to the word video, which would make you think that to vid means to make a video, or in Marathon's case, a film. This is very similar to the term vidi, which was used in the 1962 novel A Clockwick Orange. In the book, vidi also meant to look or see. The Marathon demo also has a readme with the following quote. Choose a difficulty level from the preferences according to your vid prowess. If you play action games rarely or never, then stay in kindergarten or easy. If you are a vidmaster or are under the age of 21, then you should never play below normal. Unless of course, you're a wuss. That's right, save kindergarten and easy for the older generation. Youth is only satisfied by major damage and total carnage. At this point, being a vidmaster seemed to have something to do with the level of skill of the player. Perhaps this makes sense as a player who is more skilled at looking around in an FPS video game is much more likely to be a good player. In December of 1994, more info about what it means to be a vidmaster was provided by Tunster Denise and Greg Kirkpatrick in an Inside Mac Gaming Magazine article titled Strategy and Tactics. Here is what it said in relation to the term Vidmaster. A guide to Vidmastery. There is a certain mystery surrounding Vidmastery, but there are certain characteristics that separate a true Marathon Vidmaster from an Acolyte. A Vidmaster never loses the draw. You are on a ledge, he is on the floor. Who wins? A Vidmaster can look up or down fast enough to always get a shot off. A true Vidmaster will get off a good shot. A vidmaster never uses caps lock for a run key. This is simply the wussy way to do it. The picky figure is perfectly designed to constantly hold down the control key. It is true, the easiest way to spot fodder is to look at the preferences file. If you see caps lock anywhere, you know that guy is no vidmaster. A vidmaster can climb at least two world heights by grenading himself up a wall. I will not say anything more about this. It is very important that you learn this skill without any more help. A Vidmaster can kill with the rocket launcher at will. See the target, feel the target. Know where the target is going. When you fire, imagine the target is exploding and flying across the room. A true Vidmaster fires at the target's feet, thus ensuring maximum air. From this guide we learn that being a Vidmaster is almost completely related to the skill of the player. This was in line with the definition provided by the Marathon Official Strategy Guide. Vidmaster, the Ultimate Warrior. What is strange about the strategy guide is that it also states the following. Vidmaster Tip. To run all the time in the game, set the run key as caps lock in the configured keyboard menu. This seems like a fine tip and all, but calling it a Vidmaster Tip is conflicting with the Inside Mac Gaming article. The definition of the term would change a bit when Jason Jones made a Usenet post in January of 1995, about a month after the release of the first Marathon game. The title of the post was The Marathon Vidmaster Challenge and read as follows. I challenge anyone who thinks they rule at Marathon to complete all of the game's levels on Total Carnage, starting with only the pistol and times one health. Upload your replays. Thus, the Vidmaster Challenge was born. Now, Vidmaster had more to do with solo play and creating awesome replay films rather than just purely relating to a skilled player. The official Vidmaster Oath that many players know about today will not come until the release of Marathon 2 Durandal and would show up on the level select screen for both Marathon 2 and Marathon Infinity. 
The Marathon Trilogy Manual summarizes what a Vidmaster is and provided the Vidmaster Oath. What does it mean to be a Vidmaster? It is being balanced in the calm center of a whirling and untouchable tornado of destruction while showers of grenades patter harmlessly around you and bullets crawl toward you in slow-mo. It is when your brain develops a new bundle of nerves whose only function is to reroute impulses directly from your eyes to your finger muscles so that you can twist and snap off a rocket long before you're conscious of the yellow blip in your motion detector. It is when the difference between a room full of alien warriors and a carpet of them is a matter of seconds. The word vid entered the marathon lexicon during development of the first game to distinguish the excellent players, particularly in net games, from the fodder. The oath of the vidmaster was inscribed into the skips level dialogue to remind players of the highest level of excellence they could aspire to. I pledged to punch all switches, to never shoot where I could use grenades, to admit the existence of no level except total carnage, to never use caps lock as my run key, to never ever leave a single blob alive. To do these things is to invite maximum pearl and requires one to play the game as hard and unrelentingly as possible at the highest level of skill to play as a Vedmaster. These three games, the Marathon Saga, are the best training and testing ground for Vidmasters. You can play against aliens alone or in a network group through more than 80 levels. But the true challenge is surviving in one of the 50 included net game arenas against other people. It is in such trials by fire that mighty Vidmasters are forged. Rage hard. Answer Denise, why aren't there any secret cheat codes in Marathon? Jason Jones, you mean you haven't found them yet? Okay, okay. One problem was that most of our beta testers were using them to cheat during their walkthroughs of the game, which obviously wasn't very good testing. But I also wanted to make the game challenging and not provide players with an easy way out of a difficult situation. I knew cheater programs would be all over the internet the day Marathon shipped, but running an application to modify your save game file is different than just typing go postal or something during the game and getting a billion health and 65,535 rockets. Honestly though, Marathon does have built-in cheat codes, the difficulty levels. Playing on the kindergarten level is really easy, but I bet very few people can win the game on Total Carnage, and I'd like to play a few network games with the people that can. As Jason pointed out, there were some cheats in the original Marathon beta, however, these were removed in the final release of the game. The beta testing was done by Bungie staff. If you want to know more about these cheats, you can take a look on the Marathon story page. The Marathon beta that had working cheats was never made available to the general public. However, these cheats remained in the demo and release versions of the Marathon game in a dormant state. There was one cheat that was included in the release version of Marathon, and it was alluded to by Jason in another interview. Jason Jones There is one bug in the game which is kind of a secret vidmaster cheat that you can even use in the game network game. It was just an oversight. IMG, so what's the cheat? Jason Jones, I'm not gonna tell you, laughing, because you, pointing to Tunser, can use it in the network game. The cheat Jason is referring to has been confirmed to be a cheat in the first marathon game that will allow the player to empty their entire clip. If you hold the fire key and hit the next and previous weapon almost simultaneously, then you will be able to fire in quick succession without a delay between shots. This glitch was fixed in the sequels and does not exist in the LF1 versions of the game. It only works for the primary fire for some reason. This one really isn't a cheat, but in LF1 if you hit Control shift n on Windows and Linux or Modifier and Return on the Mac, from the main menu of any of the games, then the level select screen will come up and you can play any level you like. This feature is used regularly by Vidmasters. This same trick existed in the original Mac versions of the game. While there isn't much in the way of cheats for the original versions of the game, there are some ways to cheat using Aleph 1. One setting that you can change 
that could be considered cheating is to use the crosshairs because the original game didn't have them. Turn them off if you want an authentic experience. There are some cheats that come with LF1. To use these, first you will have to activate the script that comes with LF1 for the cheats. Go to the environment settings under preferences from the main menu. Here you will need to check the use solo script option. Next you will need to navigate to the script file location. Navigate to the Marathon game folder and within the extra folder is a cheats.lua file that contains the script for the cheat. If you need to navigate to a separate drive, there is a use native file dialogs option in the environment settings that can help you. Now that you have the cheats activated, you can use them in game. Hit the backslash key to bring up the command console and enter one of the following commands. Hit enter after they have been typed. There are also some Lua scripts that can be typed in the command console in LF1 that do not require activating the script in order to use. The full list of Lua scripts can be found in the link on the LF1 wiki page. Here are some examples of commands that work from the get-go. These commands are case sensitive. Keep in mind that if you push the up key, you can cycle to the previous console commands that were entered and thus can save you a lot of time. Plugins allow you to modify things in the game such as the look of weapons, enemies, and the HUD, and so on. There are also whole new scenario campaigns you can play once you beat the base games, although they are not plugins technically but new games. The place to look for plugins for LF1 is on simplicity.com. All you need to do is place the plugins in the plugin folder with the respective games folder. You don't even need to unzip them if you don't want to, although it might be a good idea if they start slowing loading times down. Plugins are enabled or disabled within the environment settings from the main menu. For more information and links to some of the plugins, take a look around the LF1 wiki page. Also, take a look around the Simplicity website for additional plugins. Simplicity has a 7 in the place of the T. Well that is it for this video. The next video will cover some of the development information about the game. See you all then.